Hello, church family. I hope you all had a wonderful Mother's Day weekend in the Yetter household. Today, we are celebrating Junior's birthday. That's been very exciting. And Junior wants to send a special message out to Leanne and Omar. He wants you to know that it's his birthday. Message from Junior. But I want to take this update to just remind us what it means to be the church as this season has been prolonged and um, continues in past two months. And there's a story in 1 Samuel chapter 30 where uh, I think David and the Israelites exemplify what it, what it looks like, what it means to be the people of God in a time of tragedy. David and his men came back after being out for war. They came back and they found that their hometown had been ransacked and that their wives and children had been kidnapped. All of their stuff had been taken by a foreign army. And so they were obviously devastated. It was a tragic time. It was, a, it was an extremely difficult time. And their first reaction, probably like a lot of us when tragedy hits, is they turned on each other. They were upset with each other. Um, they got upset with David. It said they even went to the point where um, they wanted to stone him. So David found himself not only grieving the loss of his family and his stuff, but he was also felt like he was in danger of being stoned. Uh, it was a terribly tragic time. And I want us to look at three things that David and the people of God did that really um, exemplifies what we ought to do as a people of God when we're in these kind of circumstances. And the first thing we see David do, um, even when he was under such duress, even when he was probably despairing, it says that he strengthened himself in the Lord. He strengthened himself in the Lord. And there's a lot of things we could do. We could turn to a lot of stuff when things are difficult. We could, we could try to medicate, make ourselves feel better. We could turn on each other. Uh, we can seek comfort. But it says that David dug deep and he, he came before the Lord and he depended on God. He looked to God for strength and God strengthened him. And that's huge. Nothing else would have happened in this story if David hadn't first decided to turn to the Lord. Then the second thing we see, David not only humbled himself and depended on the Lord, but then he was aggressive in faith and the people of God were aggressive in faith. So what they did is they, they asked God what, what they ought to do. And instead of worrying about themselves, instead of, instead of seeking comfort, they thought of the most vulnerable among them. They thought of the ones, their wives and children that had been taken by the enemy that were being oppressed. And David asked God, can we go after them? Can we, can we take them back? And their hearts were, Lord, help us to set free those whom the enemy has taken. And they were aggressive in faith and God said, go. And they went. It was a very risky thing, but 400 men set out and they went after the, the army that had taken their women and children. I think it's, it's huge that not only, not only did the people of God depend deeply on God in that time, but then they were also aggressive in faith and they went to take back what the enemy had stolen. The third thing I, I want to see in this story, and this, one, this one's a real surprise. Um, I didn't expect David to do what he did at this point in the story, but what happens is 200 of the men, half of the men that set out with David got tired along the way. They got exhausted. So a part of their group got exhausted and said, we can't go on. The rest of the 200 went on. They found the enemy. They took back their women and children and all of their stuff. God gave it all back to them. They recovered what the enemy had stolen. They brought it back and they came back to this group of 200 that had gotten too exhausted. And some of the folks said, oh, man, these guys don't deserve any of what we, what we work to get. And what David said is, he said, no, we, we can't do this with what the Lord has provided for us. And what David did is he didn't, they didn't judge. See, there's a tendency when things are difficult to judge the people that maybe fall behind or get exhausted or struggle. And there's going to be people in our midst as a church who struggle for various reasons. And it, it could be easy to say, you know, why, why aren't you out there? Why don't you get out there with us? Why don't you do this or that? And they're, they're struggling just to make it. They're struggling with exhaustion. They're struggling with their mental health. They're struggling with their, their physical health. And what David did, what the people of God did is they, they cared for and shared with, they didn't judge, they cared for and shared with those who, who were struggling in their midst. 
And that's the other thing that we do when we're in crisis, when we're in tragic times, is we care for our own family. We care for our own body. We love deeply. And we see these three things that I wanna reinforce for us. When we're in difficult times, it brings out who we are as the body of Christ. We are the people of God that are connected in vital and dependent relationship on God. We ought to look to God for the things that we need. We ought to actively be seeking Him, and we've talked a lot about that. Um, we've we've got to be the people that look to God and depend on Him. Second, we've got to be people that are that are out there. We're, we are uh, participating in the mission of God which is to take back what the enemy has stolen, to undo the works of the evil one, to release those who are bound. And we ought to be going out and and looking for how God is doing that and how God wants to do that through us. And the third thing we see is we ought to care for the people of God in our midst. We ought to care for our own family. And I wanna encourage us with those things. This season has been prolonged, it's gone on and on. Some of us have gotten weary we've got to remind ourselves, this is who we are as a people of God. This is what we need to be doing and what we need to be true to as the people of God in times of difficulty, especially ought to bring out these qualities in us. Real briefly, I wanna say that this week, we, uh, I was reminded of these things because we considered as a church leadership a, an assistance that was being offered by the government, um, which is significant, a significant amount of money that would have been Um, a gift or a grant really to us. And we considered whether we ought to take it or not. And when we looked back, we realized that from the beginning, we made some decisions. From the beginning as a church, we decided that we were going to give from what we have to care for the most vulnerable among us. We We were gonna give from what we have to reach out into the community and, um, and we knew that there would be a lot of folks that are, that are struggling and we want to proclaim the gospel. We want to demonstrate the gospel and how we love people. And we decided we would be active in doing that. Um, we also decided that for all of our employees, all of those who are getting paid by the church, we are not going to cut anyone's salary. We're not going to let anyone go. Even those who can't continue working in the same way as before, we're going to continue to pay them. And in fact, our payroll has only increased since coronavirus has happened. And so when we heard that the government was willing to assist with uh, making sure we could keep people on payroll, we decided to look into it. And as we did, we realized, you know, we've been doing all these things. We've been taking care of our people. We've been reaching out into the community. We've we've given over uh, $25,000 of assistance to different families in, in the community. And the Lord provided for all of that And when we looked at our finances, we realized that he's provided everything that we need. But we really didn't need this this grant, this um, loan grant gift from from the government. And we couldn't couldn't say um, that we did um, because God's provided everything that we need. And so we, we had confidence not only to say no to that, but as a leadership, we were encouraged that, you know what, God's gonna take care of us if we continue to be true to what he's called us to. If we continue to do these three things, depend on him, participate in his mission and care for his body. And I wanna encourage you with that. This is not something that we just do as a church entity. I want you to be encouraged that it is what we're doing corporately, but I wanna encourage you also, we are the church scattered right now. We're, We're the church Um, maybe scattered in a different way than we ever have been before into our different homes and into our um, into separate places we don't gather as much but we are salt and light you are salt you are light and God wants to use you in the same way that you see him using our church corporately he wants to use you as you reach out and depend on him I want to encourage you to continue seeking the Lord continue praying at 7 p.m. each night Continue actively looking to God to meet your needs. Second, he wants to use you as you reach out to vulnerable folks around you, as you look for opportunities to share the gospel and to take back um, those who are held captive by the evil one. Pray for them. You can have a powerful ministry of prayer. You can have a powerful ministry reaching out, even if you're stuck in your home. God will give you opportunities. And third, um, let's care for one another. Let's Let's do it more and more. Let's reach out. Let's encourage one another daily. Let's lift each other up. 
Now let's be a body that really takes care of its people and loves each other deeply. That's it for now, church. We love you and uh, look forward to seeing you again before long.